Hello, welcome to Pisa, Italy. I'm Nathan Smith, professional photographer, and I'm going to show you how to set up a Wacom Intuos Pro tablet for Lightroom and for Photoshop. So this is my setup here. I use two screens. I have a 15-inch MacBook Pro and a 24-inch Apple monitor. I used to have a bamboo tablet, and what was really frustrating was having my right hand here on the tablet and having to take my left hand across my right hand and go over here to do keyboard shortcuts. So I'm making this video to show you how to set up your express keys over here to get the most out of your tablet using Photoshop and Lightroom. So the first thing that you would want to do, of course, is to open up your driver and I would recommend going to Wacom.com to get the latest driver. Now this is the, what you see in front of you here is the default setting for the Wacom tablet. Um, now I haven't even, you notice you don't see my pen on there, I'm going to put the pen near the tablet and you watch, boom, there's the uh, grip pen has just jumped into the scene. Now this is very important. I've seen several videos by prominent photographers who I greatly respect who have done videos on how to set up the express keys and a number of them have done their settings under the all tab. The problem with this is that limits you to one set of buttons. Okay, And the beautiful thing about the Wacom Intuos Pro tablet and I happen to use the small tablet and if you're debating, if you haven't bought one, if you're debating between small and medium the small tablet is um, has, of course, a smaller active area, but the advantage to that is you don't have to move all the way across uh, a huge tablet to to cover your screen. In fact, Aaron Nace, a very prominent Photoshop expert, uh, he has the website flurn.com. He actually maps just a portion of his small tablet to cover the whole screen. So. Anyway, the disadvantage to the small tablet is it does have only six buttons instead of eight. This is a screenshot from my brother who has the medium tablet, but he's a painter and artist, and so he often uses his whole arm to draw. But if you're a Photoshop and Lightroom person, um, you're a photographer, you're probably doing most of your retouching with your wrist. So you'll find that the small tablet will more than cover what you need. Anyway. So what you want to do is you don't want to do your settings under the All tab. You want to add in the programs that you have. Now, if I switch my computer quickly to Photoshop, and then I switch it back to the... Um, let me get it back into Settings here. Okay. You'll notice that Photoshop has been added to the mix here. Okay. And if I click on this, watch these buttons down here. These will actually change there is a default set of buttons for Photoshop with the Wacom tablet. So um, now when you're working with Photoshop and Lightroom, you are frequently switching between the two programs. Now there's two buttons here, the touch on off and the settings that personally I love using the touch command, but when you move the pen close to the tablet, touch is automatically turned off. The tablet is only capable of operating in either pen mode or touch mode. So personally, I don't see the need to turn it on and off because pen mode will switch it off anyway. Also, this settings key, which brings up this menu, um, and this is a useful menu, but if you go here to touch, under my gestures, a five-finger swipe down, which is what I use, will bring this uh, settings menu up. So you don't need it over here. So you can use this for something else. So I use this button to go to Lightroom when I'm in Photoshop. So I'm going to do open run, browse, and I want Adobe Photoshop Lightroom 5. And I'm going to change this up here to say open Lightroom 5 
So this way, when you're done editing a photo, you've gone from Lightroom to Photoshop, you've done your editing, now you're, you want to pop back to Lightroom, you just tap this key. The other thing that I like in Photoshop is the precision mode. And the only way to get into it easily is with this button. So I make the top button here, the precision mode. This opens up Lightroom 5. This is multiple undos. Here we have the option key, which works with many of the commands. You have the radio menu, and you have your uh, space bar, which of course is essential. And the radio menu allows you to have many, many more commands. The other thing, and I'm only going to show you this on um, here on the Photoshop, but I do this for all my settings. I do like being able to change brush size. However, I personally have reversed these because I like clockwise. I think of as a photographer, I think of stopping down and uh, opening up. So to me. I have these two keys reversed. I have the right key on the top and I have the left bracket key on the bottom. But they still operate brush size. Just a suggestion. The pen, um, I don't change this pen setting for Photoshop. So I don't need to add Photoshop under the pen. But let's go back to functions. We want to add in now Lightroom 5. Okay, and when you work on this menu, you need to work from the top down. So you want to click on, I want to do functions, and then I want functions for Photoshop. I want to do the pen, and I want to do the pen for Lightroom or Photoshop. So, um, so going over here, functions, Lightroom, express keys. Now I want these Lightroom buttons to match my Photoshop buttons for most of the buttons. So I do want precision mode here on top. Now this I don't I don't edit in I, I don't want to open Photoshop. I want to do edit in. So edit in Photoshop is Command E or uh, Alt E on a PC. Edit. So the nice thing is you can type in here whatever you want. So this shows me what this does. Precision mode, edit in Photoshop CC. Um, this is multiple undo in Photoshop. I want it to be undo, which is, of course, Command Z in Lightroom. Um, this top button is the Option key. So I want to change this to the option key, which of course you will actually use for a race uh, in Lightroom. And then this next button is the radio menu. And the last thing down here is your space bar. So we'll put that in here. And then the other thing that I like to do on the grip pen I don't mind the double click click for Photoshop. However, on the on Lightroom, actually, let me go ahead and just it just takes a second. I'm going to add Photoshop in here. The default settings are going to stay, but this way I have these in the same order. I'm going to add Lightroom. Now, in Lightroom, one thing I like to do, I like I, I don't really need to use double click. I can double tap with the tip to get a double click. But what I like is I like the, the before and after of the backslash key. So I'm going to put in here the backslash key and hit before. And now when I tap that, that key, it will show me my changes. So once you have set this up, now let me show you one other thing. The, the radial menu, if I go back here to Functions, Lightroom, um, one thing a lot of times that I like to do is I like to go from Lightroom to Color Effects, Nick Color Effects Pro. So what I can do here under the radial menu is I can change one of these because there's no really step backward in 
Lightroom. I can change this to the keystroke, clear, and I can do Command Option E, Edit, Color, Effects, 4. Okay, so now this button, when I use the radial menu, and if you don't know what the radial menu is, um, okay, hitting this brings up your radial menu. And so now when I hit the Edit and Color Effects Pro 4, this will automatically open the photo into Color Effects Pro 4, which I frequently use. But anyway, let me go through here and one last thing. Once you have set up your keys the way you want them, okay, so you have these, all these settings the way you want, I would strongly recommend going in here and opening up the program Wacom Tablet Utility. And what this allows you to do, if I hit the uh, backup key here, and you can call this whatever you want, Wacom Preferences. I'm going to call this Wacom Preferences 2 because I already have a set on here. And now it's saved. So now, what you can do is, if you follow these suggestions, you can make up a set of preferences. You can save it, maybe call it, for example, Starter Set, Wacom Starter Set. Then you can go and further, and as you add more and more and more commands, um, which you may want to do as you work with the program, um, you can then back those up, and if you ever want to revert to your st starter set, you can restore them here. Hopefully this video has been helpful. Again, I'm Nathan Smith, and I look forward to your comments and questions. Thank you for watching.